Okay, this is very impromptu, but I uh, had the idea a few years ago that um, what these bi-beveled bone rods may have been used for. So I've got a little, just a little quick excerpt that uh, me and a friend of mine, Dale Miller, put together uh, four or five years ago whenever I was living in Rolla but um, basically so this bi beveled bone rod which has a groove right there and a bevel on both ends when it's kind of flat in cross section on this face um, and then this is from Wenatchee this is from a projectile point from Sheridan Cave Ohio uh, this was found I think in re uh, in the same context um, as a peccary pig that had a hole in its shoulder blade with um, that just that this just happened to fit inside of but um, anyway there's lots of ideas that's out there uh, that to me they don't really make sense but one thing I noticed about this is it's tapered smaller here and bigger up in this area same thing here tapered to there you put these two together um, and it's still tapered it's small here and thicker up here kind of like a needle which is which penetrates real easy this uh, ivory projectile point has got little remnants of a tang there that's mostly gone now but I imagine that these two would have been fitted together in a manner similar to this um, and so I sat on this idea for a long 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 time not putting it all together because I just really wasn't sure but in the in that time I found these artifacts this is a ivory artifact it's got a tang on it um, here's an ivory artifact it's Looks like it broke from an impact, but it broke due to bending, um, like that. Uh, here's another piece that has a hole through it, has some incising on it. Here's a piece, this is typically found in Florida area. This is uh, from a deer cannon bone. Um, and this is from bone. I think it may be from... I don't know for sure, but I guess I want to believe that it's from mammoth bone. Um, these are, are ivory, and these two are bone. This is bone likely from the Pleistocene era, and this is um, after that at some point. So, part of my struggles with this was wondering how to put this together, and I don't claim this to be... Um, the absolute answer this is a prototype that I made and uh, where the this ivory or yeah this is ivory this is walrus ivory that tip has a tang on it similar to this as a matter of fact here's an epoxy cast that I made um, this cast was from the inside of these bi-beveled bone rods which are similar so I made these bi-beveled bone these are made out of persimmon but it's got a groove in there like that but there's a, a dished out area to facilitate the tang on the back there's a dished out area there I put these in there um, and so basically what I did is and I think I have some other video and pictures I'll be able to include in this as well. This is just going to be a real short video and um, just to get it out there so people can start discussing it. Um, and then I'll have a more in-depth video later on of how I did it. And I also want to test this by sticking a mammoth with it. No, just kidding. I really wish I could, but <laughs> it'd be nice to find a buffalo or... A deer or something but um, so I made this 
socket I call it a socket and I hafted that to a shaft and um, then I put pine pitch in between the two beveled bone rods along that entire flat face and put them together and then I put pine pitch around this end and inside the socket and then I stuck those together and then I used a piece of rawhide similar to this so this is impromptu but basically what I did is by putting that in there and then folding these tabs over and then tying that I put some rawhide around that to hold that together this keeps it from um, being shoved down inside like that. I did some tests before without the rawhide and they failed on the very first try. And I put the rawhide in there and then hit it up against the concrete slab in my driveway and up against the brick on my house and it seemed to hold together very well. Uh, so I put the the piece of rawhide in there and then the ivory point then wrapped it up and tied it to hold it together I put some notches in the very end of the bibeveled bone rods similar to this where it's got a notch on the side there and there and then it looks like there's something across the the outside there I put something there anyway on this one and then I filled in all the grooves and with pine pitch and used a flake scraper to uh, blend uh, all the transitions together uh, and anyway there's you know there's nice slender transition through there a little bit harder through there and I kind of have the same effect on this one it's but 90 degrees opposite of this of the forward section so it's very well maybe it's the same anyway um, there was a very slender gradual transition to that and to here as well um, originally I came up with I with this idea because I was gonna wrap something around there but uh, this was a prototype that changed many times along the way so you know my next one I probably won't make this I probably will do this because I like the way I like the idea of a composite system if if this was one single unit and it broke then I would have to remake the entire unit again but with this being the first point of contact it's the first point of failure and then you as you progress down the shaft your failure modes decrease so this would be your second point of failure your third point of failure and this would probably never fail but it's possible but you would have several of these in stock in case you needed them several of these in stock in case you needed them this probably wouldn't break it'd be made out of ivory but yeah, I don't know if they would have had that or not anyway this is uh, just an idea that I put together about what the bivalve bone rods were used for and I actually did a poster on this um, and I think it was either North Carolina or South Carolina at an archaeological conference I presented a poster when was that it was um, 2012 I think uh, so Anyway, like I said, I'll post another video after I do some testing and probably do a better breakdown of how I built this. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks. Oh, um, I guess I did want to say one more thing. The, the business end of this is complete, but the back of this isn't complete yet. I've started to taper it. Um, with when you're throwing a long slender rod like this 
if it's the same diameter and all the way down therefore the same weight distribution from middle to end and middle to end then it'll tend to rotate or will can rotate very easily in flight so I want to taper this back end down a lot so that most of the weight is on one end that will make it more difficult to rotate during flight and it will have a more stable flight okay thanks